It is a nice, bright, sunny morning here in Winnipeg. And I'm guessing about 18 hours has passed now. And I'm thinking I'd best get the uh, protective hoop that goes over this part here on. But before we do that, I want to take a nice close look here. You remember how yesterday the uh, extra thin sort of wicked its way into the deck? I was wondering how that was going to look after it dried. So let's slip on the macro lens and have a nice close look. Okay, I moved in about as close as I can get without putting on the super macro. And I think we actually get a better perspective with uh, just looking at it like this. And uh, speaking of perspective, you can see uh, Mr. T's poking device here. Um, yeah, that does look like weathering. Um, I, I'm not uh, upset about that at all. Let's get our parts, and we may as well start with step number 40. And we need to make five, and we need D1. Well, here's the D sheet, and here is number one up here. One, two, three. We need five, but fortunately, there are two D sheets. So we've actually got six. Now, I was wondering why it was that my voice just didn't seem to want to be cooperating this morning. Well, I didn't have my coffee going. Anyway, we're going to be wanting to get these three pieces right here. And being as I'm probably going to want to use my macro lens, and being as that I don't want them to be sliding around when I'm using my special new and improved cutter, we're going to just tape it down here. Now, you don't, you don't see me doing this, but I almost always do it. And it just helps when I'm, you know, coming in with a cutter. The piece doesn't slide on the plexiglass. At least that's the plan. Okay, some of those I did better than others. Now, I can hammer a nail quite well with my left hand, but I prefer my right. So I'm going to just turn this whole thing around here. Um, yeah, and then I can cut these tabs a lot more, uh, you might say, easily. Sometimes these, <clears throat> excuse me, sometimes these will remove a little easier off the plastic than others. Um, in case you didn't know, there's the, the plastic is still, sticky plastic is still on the other, other side there. Okay, let's keep going here. Now, as you know, the idea is to get as close to the railing as possible without actually cutting it. Now oh, that might have been a little bit too close. Okay, let's slip on the macro lens for this last one here.
Now these railings can be bent out of shape so incredibly easily. All right, let's get Andy's photo etch bender going here. Okay, we have all five now. But if you will remember, this one right here, I bent it just very, very slightly. Now, I, I would like to see if I could possibly just pull it out just a little bit here. In all likelihood, it won't be noticed, but just sort of a bit of a challenge here. See if I could just pull it out just a little bit here. Okay, I do believe that I've got it the same now. Maybe too much. Anyway, in all likelihood, I'm going to be bending a more out of shape before I'm through here with Andy's bender, so. Okay, let's get ourselves repositioned here and try and get this thing in place. Now, just in case there's somebody new watching and they haven't seen me do this before, this piece that I'm touching right now is the tread. They have to be bent later. Now, the thought was that maybe now is the time to bend the treads while this is is flat like this and uh, but then it would make it a little bit more difficult to get the uh, piece underneath the where it has to break here in the bender now this is the tread this is what I call the stringer like like stringers on the on stairs and of course this, these pieces here are the are the railings so we want it to bend right here where the tread is hooked onto the stringer. So I'm going to just clamp down, try and get it as straight as I can here. Maybe just a little bit more. Now I can't go too far in because if you go too far in, then when you fold the thing up at 90 degrees, it, if it binds against the side of the photo etch bender here, it'll have a tendency to want to rip apart. So now we're just going to clamp this down here. Now I'm going to be putting a blade underneath the, the edge here like this to fold this up. Now in order for you to be able to maybe see it happening, I'm going to twist this whole thing 90 degrees here. I'm going to reposition here. Now I was just realizing here that maybe I should make it easy on myself and bend this one first and then pull it now I can pull it out and bend the other one. You'll see what I mean. I'm just going to back this off a bit here. Did I spit on it? I'm sorry. Okay. Now the idea will be to try and not bend the railing. Try and get underneath there. Now we don't want to bend the railing, and we don't want to bend the end of the of the uh, treads. We just want this to bend up like this. Now is this tight down? Yeah, it's tight. I didn't have that quite straight in there, did I? Let's push it in just a little bit, maybe. Yeah. Maybe I went too far. Okay, I do believe I can tweak this up later. Okay, now we'll pull it out. Try not to spit on it. I know you can't see it, but I am <laughs> I am right over top of it. <laughs> that looks pretty good. Okay. Now we may not be able to go at a perfect 90 degrees with the uh, stringer to the treads, but uh, we can, like I say, we can always tweak it up later. 
this just sort of gets it started okay now once the railing hits the photo etch bender I have to stop which is about like that okay Yeah, it's going to take very little, you might say, tweaking. All right. Now I'm going to do the other four pretty much the same way. This little dot I just made with my mechanical pencil here. And the reason for that is so that I can keep the uh, part centered in the, in the frame for the camera and still work on it at the same time. That way I don't have to keep glancing up at the monitor and losing my uh, perspective here. Um, now, we have to bend, we have to bend these treads. If you will remember a few months ago when I was doing some stairs, I accidentally bent one set of, of stairs, or, or ladders rather, uh, I bent the treads the wrong way. And instead of bending them the way I'm going to do right now, like this, I bent them the other way, which would have made it in reality absolutely impossible for anyone to have walked down the stairs. Now, I think probably the easiest way to do these, and it doesn't matter if you start at the top and work down or at the well, maybe maybe we could. Maybe we could go this way and just see what would happen here. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry that you have to look at my very unkempt finger here. By the time I get to the to the fifth ladder, uh, oh boy, I almost had an accident there. It's so easy to accidentally bend these. They, have, they should be bent just a little bit more, maybe. Mind you, it only has to kind of look right. And the last one. Okay, now... <clears throat> Maybe this bottom one should be just a little bit more. And the next one. Okay, they're all more or less. I think they're more or less right. Okay. Now I think I should be squeezing these together just a little bit here. It looks to me like the the railing should be just a little closer together here. Maybe I should be using my other tweezers for this. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead now and uh, and do the other one uh, the same way I did this one. Yeah, that looks that looks pretty good. Okay, let's try not to bend them. Okay, we have all five ladders done now, and as far as I can tell, I've got the treads bent the right way on all five. And about yesterday's episode, I've got to talk about it just a little bit here. I've got to talk about the banjo. Well, apparently not everybody has the same sentiment towards banjos that I do. <laughs> yeah, in fact, I got a picture here uh, as one of my Facebook friends who is also one of the viewers and is also making this exact same uh, model that we're making here. Um, yeah, he, he sent a picture of himself and <laughs> look what he's holding. Yeah, uh, yeah, so I guess I got a sort of re-evaluate my idea about banjos here because uh, if uh, a model maker like uh, Jim Steen 
uh, plays the banjo, maybe the banjo isn't all that bad. <laughs> I hope you don't mind me showing this picture, Jim. Um, yeah. Anyway, one of the other viewers uh, also related a, a joke to us in the comments. Probably a lot of you saw it. And just in case you didn't, it goes something like this. Now, I'm going to probably get it all screwed up here because uh, I don't do a very good job of telling jokes. Uh, anyway, the joke goes like this. There was sort of a bluegrass band. And, uh, of course, they had a banjo player. And they were getting all assembled on stage to do their, uh, do their gig. And uh, uh, one of the band members looks at the banjo player and says, Where's your banjo? Oh my goodness, I've left it in the car, and I've left the car unlocked, too. Well, he rushes back out to his car, opens the door, and sure enough, somebody had thrown in another banjo. Now I guess the bottom line here is that I've got to start being a little bit more careful what I say in these videos. People are actually listening. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching, and all being well, we'll see you tomorrow.